Now, in this video, what I wanted to do was kind of discuss what's going on in the hockey world right now. The term monopoly gets thrown around a lot because to be fair, there is a couple of brands that are essentially running the entire hockey scene at the minute that dictate the flow of everything. Now, if we go back just a few years, for example, when I first started this channel, there was so many different options. There was probably about seven or eight different hockey skate manufacturers. There was countless manufacturers that made sticks. At one point, so many so that we couldn't create the videos quick enough for the amount of stick brands that were being created. Now, whether these were really good brands or they weren't so good brands is not really the question. What I'm trying to kind of hit at right now is, are you guys happy with how everything is going with the hockey scene in terms of the availability of equipment from various different manufacturers versus what we actually have today? When you look at where you can buy gear from, realistically, there's four brands. Now, watching this back while I'm editing it, I just wanted to clarify. When I say four brands, I mean as close to top to bottom brands as you can get, meaning companies that sell full hockey equipment, protective, including sticks and skates. Three of those in the world. One of them is pretty close to being able to do all of that. So that's what I mean by four brands. And I also mean if you're to go to countries that play hockey, the majority of countries in the world that play hockey that have at least one professional league, and you go into a retail store that sells hockey equipment there, what brands are you going to see on the shelves? Realistically, it's going to be four of them. I know there's a lot more brands out there that make gear, but when we're looking at it from a global perspective, it's not as many as you might think. Just wanted to clear that up. Let's get back to the video. There was so many more before that. And the reason that this has happened is essentially an amalgamation of lots of different things. Whether that be because of the economic situation, whether that be down to um, acquisitions that companies do, essentially we've seen this a lot where one brand essentially buys another or they merge and become the same thing. Or whether that's just because the particular brand didn't adjust and kind of adapt to the times to keep themselves relevant um, to keep going, not pointing any fingers, graph. <clears throat> but the end result of that essentially means that we're left with a monopoly industry where a couple of brands are essentially dictating the flow of everything. Now, I kind of feel like this is a good and a bad thing. Taking away choice isn't always a bad thing. It means that everything becomes a lot more streamlined. A lot of different stick brands that were out there, if we even go back, say, five or six years ago, they was brands popping up all over the place. And I don't have to go into the mechanics of how these brands were creating their products or whether they were essentially cloning products from other manufacturers in the same factories, slapping on different skins and charging half the amount for the product. That's a video in itself. But I feel like the way it is now, everything's a lot more streamlined. It makes it a lot easier when you go to a store to be able to pick up a product. This isn't me saying that I like the monopoly style industry that we have, but I do like how streamlined things are. And essentially, things are gonna become even more streamlined. If you saw the video that I posted uh, just before this one, talking about the agent stick against the sync stick, I mentioned in that video that Bauer have essentially quietly removed the supreme range of sticks. This is something that I wanted to touch on today, and it's kind of why I like and also dislike the way that the hockey manufacturing world is going right now. And this also creates the question of, are hockey manufacturers and brands dictating how the game is evolving? Or is the game itself dictating how the equipment is evolving to support it? Now, of course, in my mind, these kind of go hand in hand. There's gonna be changes with the equipment that's gonna cause the game to adapt. Like for example, if you were a player that used a certain stick range that is now completely unavailable, you are forced to adapt to whatever is available. But at the same time, when a manufacturer completely flips the way that they size or fit skates, or even the options that they offer players, that might cause the game to also shift in the way that it's played. Like with the big push that we're seeing on quick releasing sticks, as opposed to big wind up sticks. I feel like they could be valid points for each, but I'd really like you guys to get involved in the comment section and let me know which one you think it is. Now, from a very selfish content creator perspective, I love it when there's a lot of brands. There was, you know, a few years ago, almost endless choices of different companies to collaborate with, different products to take a look at. But now we're only left with essentially four different companies when we look at core hockey equipment that we can kind of compare against each other. But where that kind of is a plus side is it does make life easier for players and also reviewers because we have a lot less companies to be able to kind of work with to be able to give you the content that you guys love watching. But it also means that we can go deeper into the brands that are available today. So when we look at 
a stick range from Bauer, we can look at the top price point, the one below that, the one below that, and kind of compare them against each other. We can do that with skates. We can do that with protective. This is something that we're literally in the process of doing with CCM skates right now, and also true. So that makes it a lot easier for us to give you a lot more detailed information. But I was curious to see what you guys thought about the state of the hockey equipment that's available to us today and the companies that are around versus the companies that were around just a few years ago. Now, when we look at the notion of streamlining different pieces of equipment that are out there, we've seen manufacturers drop ranges or families before. Like if we look at Bauer, not so long ago, they had three different families of skates. They had obviously Nexus or Nixus, so you guys love to slay me for that in the comments. They had Supreme and they have Vapor. Supreme and Vapor is still here, but Nexus is gone. Not a lot of people really had much to say about that. Of course, there was your traditional players out there that liked that classic fitting skate with kind of like minimal tech on it that had probably a lot to say about the fact Bauer discontinued that range. But now in more recent times, discontinuing Supreme, what's happening there? Now, the reason that I've seen Bauer mention about why they've done this is because they feel like the type of player that uses those sticks is kind of like a dime a dozen. They're not really around as much as they used to be. That's that big player that sits on the point and does nothing but take massive big wind up booming slap shots. Now, of course, that's not saying players that are big that take slap shots or players that just like take, taking big slap shots aren't in the game anymore. It just means that the game has shifted in kind of like my interpretation of what they're saying. And what you have now is a much more requirement for players to be dynamic on the ice. It's not so much a case of that player's the enforcer, that one's the goon, that one's the guy that does nothing but take slap shot after slap shot. No wrist shots, no backhand, just big wind up slap shots. That's not really the game that we're faced with today. Players are having to be able to be much more adaptable on the ice, to be able to shoot in different scenarios, to be comfortable shooting in different scenarios. And more importantly, the game is quicker than it's ever been before. So I do understand the need to drop that line of sticks if it's just not one that they feel is required. But aside from that, another reason from a manufacturer's perspective is gonna be reducing their skews. So of course, what I mean by this is when you have Vapor Sticks, Supreme Sticks, Nexus Sticks, that's three top end sticks. But below those top end sticks could be maybe four or six other sticks. And then you have to think about the different curves. The, like if it's a P28, if it's a P88, then you have to think of grip, no grip. Is it left-handed? Is it right-handed? The different flexes of the sticks, the different heights of the sticks. These are all individual products. And it means that when a manufacturer drops an entire range or a family, like for example, what's happened with Supreme, they eliminate had so many different options of sticks that they have to build and then stores have to buy and hope sell. So from a manufacturing or a branding perspective, it's gonna save them money, it's gonna save them a lot of effort and hassle, and it's probably gonna allow them to make a little bit more profit and reduce their overall costs, which I kind of just mentioned at the beginning. But that is one of the major reasons why we're gonna see this happening. And of course, when you look at what a low kick point stick can do at a mid kick or a hybrid kick point, it kind of does fill that gap of what a high kick point stick like the Supreme might be able to do. So now this means that Bauer, for example, have the Vapor range of sticks, which is low kick, and they have the Nexus range of sticks, which is mid kick. No more high kick Supreme. Now, if we look at another manufacturer, for example, like CCM, when they introduced their regular fit, tapered fit, and wide fit, the instant they did this, what I looked at when I looked at their skate catalog was rib core now really doesn't have a place. Now, what I mean by this is if we look at jet speed, which is quite stiff, and we look at super tax, which is the stiffest range of skates that CCM offers, and then rib core, which was described as a flexible fit. So essentially it wasn't as hard, it wasn't as, um, the construction wasn't as stiff, so you had a bit more play and forgiveness in the construction of that skate. You could now achieve that more forgiving construction by just dropping down in a range, whether that be jet speed, which is slightly softer than super tax. And of course with the fit, now every style of skate that CCM creates essentially is available in the same fits, which again kind of made me look at rib core, the, the rib core skate, in this case the 100K, and not really see a place for that skate to fit in. So my assumption was that skate was gonna be dropped um, and I can pretty confidently say that I just don't think we're going to be seeing a rib core revived in the next season.
And of course, the reasons for that comes down to exactly what I explained with the Bauer situation, whereby manufacturers are able to reduce their SKU codes, reduce costs, essentially eliminate a lot of headaches for them from a manufacturing perspective and just offer more streamlined options that they feel are not only going to perform well for the players that are out there, but are also going to sell well as well. And there's not going to be such wastage with stock that they create. It's going to be the exact same thing with any manufacturer out there looking to kind of drop the different ranges or uh, lines of products that they might have introduced moving forward. Now the undertone question here is, are you a fan of this or did you prefer it when there was loads of different options available? Now while options are great, I kind of feel like shopping in hockey stores was incredibly messy because there was just so much stuff to consider. And from a store's perspective, I can't imagine how much stress it must be for them to figure out which lines, which ranges and which models within those ranges they're going to stock and how much of them to pick up. When everything becomes a lot more streamlined, it becomes easier for stores to be able to buy more effectively with less wastage. And I think from a player perspective, it makes the selection process a lot better as well. But let me know. First of all, do you like the idea of hockey monopolies? Um, that's not really something that we can help right now. Of course, it's something that could change in the future. Do you want that to change or are you happy with the way things are now? Do you like it when the brands drop ranges or families within what they offer themselves? In other words, do you agree with what they've done by getting rid of Supreme by I suspect CCM is probably going to be getting rid of the rib core range in regards to the skates. Do you agree with this? And do you see any other manufacturers altering what they offer currently? Let me know down in below in the comment section, or maybe you have some insight information that we don't know about. But as always, a big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Make sure that you thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post. And of course, any questions you have, leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.